Uh, tonight at 10:30, join legendary Bear Bryant Erlocker along with Dave Wanstead, Jim Miller, and Mark Shanowski for the premiere of the Hard Count. Tune in to hear number 54's take on last Sunday's Bears loss. A look ahead to Monday night against the Eagles, and much more. The Hard Count, presented by Restore, premieres tonight at 10:30 on CSN Chicago. Contreras stays in the catch. Spencer Patton is the new Cubs pitcher. Already on for the 14th time. One and one with a 442. Had an outstanding year down at AAA. The uh, bottom of the order here Arcia Maldonado and then Rivera, who came in in the double switch. Lando Arcia shoots one out of the right center and a running catch by Fowler. Nicely done. By the way, looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth, it will be Fowler in the top of the order against Thornburg. Side ball one. Uh, they showed on the, the uh, <coughs> big uh, board here a little bit ago. Hunter Pence hitting that home run against the Cardinals, and everybody cheered. But really, if you're a Cub fan, you you kind of prefer the Cardinals win tonight, right? Just in case the Cubs lose, you'd like rather see the Cubs clinch it with a win here tomorrow. Yeah, why not? I think you'd always prefer to clinch with your team winning on your home field. Uh, it goes against the DNA of a lot of fans to root for the Cardinals, but. If he was looking for the best outcome, it would be the Cubs either winning tonight or, or tomorrow. In the afternoon game. Yeah, but I can hear a Cub fan right now saying, yeah, but J.D., I don't want the Cardinals to make the playoffs. And we're battling for a spot. As Patton strikes out Maldonado. Yeah, there, there's that. Two outs. Hey, the uh, A's swept the Royals 14 to 5 the final tonight. Mike Selleck tweeted this. The A's 31 run margin of victory in the four game series is the largest in athletics history in a four game set. Mike is the uh, baseball information manager for the A's. That is something. Mm. Speaking of the A's, they released Billy Butler the other day, and the Yankees have picked him up. And Billy Butler and Danny Valencia got into a fight in the clubhouse a while back out there in Oakland. And a lot of reports that Valencia won't be back in an A's uniform either. Red Sox beat the Yankees seven to five. Wow. Diving stop. Bryant throw to first. Got him. To end the inning. Craig Council. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to want to take a look at this one. Wants to take another look. I was watching Anthony Rizzo and normally he just start running towards the dugout and flip the ball to the mound but he hesitated too as if he thought maybe safe or certainly probably realized it was close enough where they would want to take a look and Craig Council will not challenge 
We go to the last of the ninth. Last chance for the Cubs by four. With that box, you'll be the first to win PlayStation VR. Player one. Soon, it spreads like wildfire. Humanity becomes so plugged in, we never see them coming. That's why I was set back to stop you. Oh. Hey, I won. Right. The future of gaming starts at Taco Bell. Grab any $5 box and you can be one of the first to win PlayStation VR. You ever feel like you're spinning? Like you're stuck in the same place in life? Just going round and round and round. Yeah, man. Been there. No, actually spinning. Oh, we can fix that by going to Midas. They have a great selection of tires. Sorry, Doug, I thought you were trying to get deep. Nah. Trust the Midas Touch for tires, brakes, oil, everything. Wendy set out to improve their grilled chicken sandwich. But you know, sometimes a little project turns into a big one. Marinating the chicken to be juicier and more tender led to overhauling the bun with seven grains. Adding a fresh coat of honey mustard and... A pop of color? That's where the new spring greens and tomato come in. And if you think the new grilled chicken sandwich looks better than ever... This is your new grilled chicken sandwich! <laughs> wait until you taste the delicious difference. And for a limited time, get the combo for just $5. Well, it can be done. And the Cubs are only down one here in the ninth. The Red Sox scored six times in the last two innings, including five runs in the ninth. Capped by a Hanley Ramirez game-ending three-run homer as the Sox stun the Yankees seven to five. Ramirez homered up Dellen the Tances for the game winner. So top of the order. Ball one to Fowler. Strong pull on the infield. We are in the outfield grass. And he'll get out of play. Oh, Fowler speed, a slow ground ball on the right side. That would really have to go to make a play on him. One and two. of third. Maldonado wanted that fastball neck high. And Thornburg threw it thigh high. Cubs chairman Tom Ricketts. <laughs> Can't sit still. He and his wife Cece hoping for a big comeback win. And celebration tonight outside. Well, yeah, the stage is set, isn't it? We talked about a walk-off, how much fun that would be. Yeah, you called it earlier. Cubs trying to do it the hard way tonight. Oh, strike three. Fowler doesn't agree. One away. Third time Dexter has struck out tonight. Tumbling off speed pitch, a splitter or something like that. According to our pitch tracks, it was uh, on the plate. Bryant with that stellar defensive play to win the top of the inning. One for four. After his seventh inning single, he was picked off at second. He held.
Thornburg's 1-0 is high. As is always the case, we will have Cubs post game live, win or lose. But if the Cubs do come back and win, we will have extended post game coverage here from Wrigley Field. <laughs> oh man, he got away with one. Two on pitch, bounces in front of the plate. It will be interesting to see what Maldonado calls for here on 2 0. He tried to get him to throw a down and away fastball, and Thornburg threw it right over the heart of the plate. I think he's having that debate with the dugout right now. So, no, we're going to hook him. Three and two. Yeah, that was a little conversation with somebody over there on the council, the pitching coach, somebody. Must be making some suggestions from the dugout. Maldonado overruled. Arcia. Two down. It's up to Rizzo. For three on the night, two reaches, once on a walk. Hit one for Bernice. Riz. Right to left wind. It's a little more gusto now than it was earlier, too. To back curveballs to start the at bat. Seen a lot of good curveballs tonight. Mike Montgomery, the starter for the Cubs, solid tonight. Threw a lot of curveballs. Six innings, three runs, only one earned for Montgomery. Changeups or splitters. Three and one. Zobrist would bat next. Zobrist playing no doubles in the outfield. Hernan Perez in right field, basically on the warning track. Another one. It's three in a row. He has not seen a fastball against Thornburg. Let's change, change yeah. So two curves to start it, and then three consecutive changeups. He walked him. Another changeup. This time it's ball four. Uh, it's just great discipline by Rizzo. Just Understanding the situation that Thornburg wasn't going to challenge him with a fastball there. This is a good changeup. That's exactly what you're trying to do with that pitch. You're not trying to leave it in the zone. You're throwing it on the plate below the knees, hoping to get the swing and miss or a weak contact. Javier Baez will run for Rizzo. First by Carter. 
Pitch to Zobrist is a strike. Corey Knabel is up as Thornburg has hit the 32 pitch mark already. Near the bag and Arcia will step on second and the Cubs celebration will have to wait as the Brewers take game one of this series 5 4. A disappointed crowd here they were mm -hmm. they were ready weren't they. <laughs> well, we talked about it at the outset that uh, it was a good night for a ball game and a party. Well we got the ball game but we're not going to have the party not tonight. Brewers stand tall there Thornburg under pressure at the end but he was able to hang on and finish finish it off. So the Cubs hope to celebrate after tomorrow's game and as I mentioned J.D. we're going to see a much different lineup a lot of bench guys are going to get a start and tomorrow Joe's calling it his Sunday lineup on Friday. Yeah so that'll be fun you know we talked about it tonight uh, Mike Montgomery making the start on what could be the clinching game he, he performed well tonight unfortunately for him he didn't get the win the Cubs obviously did not get the win so a similar storyline tomorrow with Joe using a lot of the bench guys in a possible clinching ball game. The toast of the game is presented by Benny's Beverage Depot. Benny's is the official champagne provider of the Chicago Cubs. The opposite field hit off the bench. Scooter Jeanette, two run double in the seventh, ended up being the game winner. And a rare off night for Justin Grimm. That will tee it up again tomorrow. Yep, we'll be right back here on CSN. Our pregame coverage starts at 12.30 for game two and a possible clincher for the Cubs. For J.D. and our entire CSN crew here at Wrigley Field, Len Casper inviting you to stay tuned as Blue Cross Blue Shield Cubs postgame live is coming up next. Final score once again, Brewers 5, Cubs 4. Stay tuned. Luke Stuckmar back in our downtown Chicago studios. We're going to have all the highlights, analysis, and reaction in just a moment from the series opener between the Cubs and Brewers. Up next, it's Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield with Cap and Holly. We'll be right back. Comparing midsize sedans? Here's what puts the Kia Optima ahead of the Nissan Altima. The Kia Optima has an available surround view monitor and turbo engine. The Nissan Altima does not. The 2016 Kia Optima is a KBB.com Best Buy Award winner. The Nissan Altima came up short there, too. Discover the next generation Optima. It's not your average midsize sedan. Lease the Optima LX for only $179 a month or get 0% financing. Visit your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Kia dealer for details. Now that Big Poppy's retiring, he's being smarter with his money. I need to be smart with my money. So he's become a super savvy shopper. Oh. That's why the Xfinity Best Offer of the Year is a home run. Lock in your rate for two years. Plus, get the X1 voice remote. There is no crying in baseball. It's the Big Poppy of deals. I'm not crying. My eyes are just sweating. Score our Best Offer of the Year on the X1 Triple Play from Comcast for only $89.99 a month and lock in your rate for two years. Go online, call, or visit today. It's SUV season from Ford. The best time to get into a new Escape, Edge, or Explorer with features that keep you connected. And with Sirius XM, enjoy 150 channels of commercial-free music, plus sports, entertainment, news, and comedy. That's how you become America's best-selling brand. Now get an Edge or Explorer with 0% financing for 60 months, plus 1750 bonus cash, or lease a 2017 Escape for just $199 a month.
Looks like it's on the top. He makes the catch. here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the DW crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Find us on social media right now for gorgeous photos and great Wisconsin giveaways. Speaking of free stuff, did you know every month we give away an exciting vacation? This month you can win a prize package to Lake Geneva. Just visit discoverwisconsin.com for details. Saturday mornings at 10 on Comcast Sportsnet. Cubs Baseball on CSN Chicago is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Honda dealers, as reliable as the cars themselves. Xfinity, Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Audi, truth in engineering. Menards, save big money at Menards. And by Toyota, discover more in a Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com or your local Toyota dealer today. Let's go places. Presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Oh, two. In the air to left. Soler won't get it. It's a fair ball, and the Brewers will get a couple. Two run pinch hit doubles. Scooter Jeanette, and it's five to three. And the Cubs will have to wait to party at least one more day. They fall to the Milwaukee Brewers tonight. 5-4 your final. 5-7-0. Just a little bit better, a little bit cleaner than 4-10-2. And, and welcome in to Cubs Post Game Live here from Wrigley. It's Blue Cross Blue Shield Cubs Post Game Live. He's Todd Hollinsworth. I'm David Kaplan. I'm not surprised that they lost because the Brewers have the capability to beat people, and they have done that. I'm surprised that the Cubs defensively were as sloppy tonight as they were. Two errors. There could have been a third. Rizzo made a nice play to bail out Russell. And the ball that dropped from Scooter Jeanette just looked like Soler never thought it would be fair. Yeah, the word I would use in this ballgame tonight is the word rhythm. We didn't really ever seem to kind of, you know, get into that Cubs rhythm. Now, I thought at the end there might be a chance if we do what we've seen a lot of here lately, the Cubs coming back and winning a ball game in this eighth and ninth inning. Thought that was a possibility, kind of making up, covering up those mistakes. But that was not going to be the case tonight. Thornburg did a nice job mixing his pitches, as did the rest of the Brewers' bullpen. Those guys came in through good curveballs, good sliders as well. Uh, Cubs just not able to capitalize. You're right, Cap. I mean, when you look back at this game, it would have been a win. It would have been a great celebration. I think when we broke it down, it would have been the same result. We would have said, yeah, you know, they were a little sloppy tonight. Yeah, sloppy. And then we saw a number of guys take called third strikes. Dexter Fowler took a called right. third strike. I think it was 3-1. He took the next two pitches. Wilson Contreras, a 2-0 count with the tying and potentially go ahead run on base and he took a couple pitches so we did not see the aggressive approach that we used are used to seeing. well and again you got to give the Brewers a lot an awful lot of credit I thought a lot of their best pitches came in hitters counts were the Cubs you know Cubs get ahead 2-0 2-1 and they'd snap off a curveball. They'd snap off a slider. Cup hitter would take it. Then there was, uh, you know, some misinterpretation of what they thought the strike zone was. I'm not putting that on the Cubs. I'm just saying that they weren't seeing it the same way as the home plate umpire was at that time. So there were some borderline pitches that didn't go their way. But that's the one thing that really stood out to me when you kind of get to what the Brewers' bullpen did a very good job of tonight was mixing in their breaking balls. And uh, they threw them in hitters' counts, and that's really what it came down to. But you're right. I mean, you think about a couple of errors. Chris Bryant got nabbed off second base. I mean, there were just things there that the Cubs don't traditionally do in their wins and you know what I, I'm not surprised that it kind of ended the way that it did tonight certainly everybody here in this I, I Wrigley Field tonight was expecting more it just happened to be a sloppy ball game all right let's take you through the scoring place from tonight's ball game Cubs jumped on top early in this ball game when Jorge Soler put a charge in one he turned on it 94 mile an hour fastball great to see Soler doing that again so much of his power kind of when he started to heat up when he came back here was the middle of the field he's turning on 94 got ahead in the count got himself a good pitch to hit 
and gave the Cubs the lead at the time. All right, hardest hit ball by a Cub this year with an exit velocity of 114 miles an hour. He got all of it. <laughs> Beast mode. Hey, you know what? Maybe this is Solaire's time of the year. I mean, we've watched it again. I think we were probably expecting uh, maybe bigger numbers, more results this year. But it seems to me that he heats up when it matters most, and he's doing it right now. Then the Brewers would come back in this ball game, and a lot of it due to sloppy defense by the Cubs. Brewers fourth inning. Addison Russell had one throw that he nearly airmailed into the stands. Rizzo, being six foot four or five, was able to jump up, pull it down, and get it out. And then he threw one that Rizzo tried to come up with, went off the end of his mitt. He was trying to keep his foot on the bag, and it ends up leading to 200 runs. Well, yeah, and that's exactly right. That error right there kind of triggered the back-to-back -back doubles by Santana and Arcia. Uh, you know, that's sometimes what happens. Again, this team all season long has done a good job of pitching, picking up, the hitting, the hitting, picking up, the defense sometimes. It's what good teams do, but in this ball game, that error certainly felt like it led to, obviously, what happened. A back-to-back -back doubles right there, and the Brewers are able to turn it into runs. You know, you're also able to get a Keon Broxton home run. I mean, he's not, uh, you know, a huge home run threat, but he's able to put a charge on one, gets them right back in the ball game in here tonight. And then the Cubs are trailing in the ball game 3-2. They get an opportunity to get someone his first major league hit. Happens to tie the game. It's Mike Montgomery. <laughs> Good swing of the bat. Use the middle of the field. Great to get the thing tied up. I think at that point in the ball game, when Montgomery got that base hit, we all believed that this is where the Cubs were going to take over this ball game and start pushing it in their direction. You know, right after that, Dexter was able to single, but Chris Bryant looks like he's pressing a little bit as he tries to get to 100 RBIs. And you know, the season's a long season. He strikes out with men on base. I thought his recognition of some pitches tonight. He was swinging at a lot of stuff up in the zone. Just a little too aggressive, plain and simple. Um, I think he's going to work himself out of it. You're right. I, I mean, the comparison, I said it to you. You know, we, we talked about it a little bit last year and what we saw towards the end of the season. I, I, I hope he's not pressing. I really don't think he, he needs to. He's got so much time left to do good things. He just sometimes you get into ruts, and I think it's as simple as that. And usually when you get into a rut as a hitter, when you've been as good as he and as hot as he's been all season long, you expand your strike zone. He knows these things, and that's what I guarantee he's going to be working on to get himself out of it. Just pitch selection right now and not trying to do too much. You get antsy when you're not seeing the fastball. You start to expand. All right, then the Brewers are able to take a two-run lead. Again, Justin Grimm puts himself in a little trouble, just couldn't quite locate, walks a man, gives up a double, and then a ball that Scooter Jeanette hits, you think it's going to be caught, look like Soler thinks it's going to be foul, yeah. and the ball drops. It Great. just finds, it, it finds its way down the left field line right there, right? That would have been an incredibly difficult catch for Soler, but he kind of went after it like he thought it was going to end up foul, didn't chase it. We've seen him chase that ball into the wall before, but again, a little bit more cautious there, probably thinking with the lefty up being Jeanette that it was going to tail foul, doesn't do it. All right, to the podium we go. Before we continue, let's hear from manager Joe Madden, brought to you by Xfinity. No, I mean, you know, it was a great game. We, we uh, like to have two pitches back primarily, the the base hit by Arcia on the 2-0 pitch and then um, walking Maldonado. Those were the two. Uh, big components of the end. We made a couple mistakes on defense uncharacteristically, but that's going to happen. Um, but down to the last drop once again, um, uh, they've been playing this tough, Milwaukee has, and you got to give them some credit. What, what did you think of Montgomery? Really good. Outstanding. Um, again, he did everything well at right, and then just that, that one breaking ball, uh, the cutter to uh, Arcia. Otherwise, he had a really, really nice day. Good stuff. Outstanding curveball, like a really premium curveball. Uh, Velocity was good. Sink on the fastball gets his ground balls. Great, nice changeup. This guy's gonna be really good. He's gonna be really good. Did you sense the guys were maybe anxious at all, like for the possibility of clinching, or no? Not no, they were eager. Uh, I'll use the word eager. I think that's a good word. I think it's better than anxious. Um, they were ready to go. Uh, came out. We got got the lead. Soler, he's hit that guy pretty well in the past. I just thought we had a, a really good. Uh, way about us today, and, and we just again we uh, we made a couple mistakes that we normally don't make, but um, it's just going to happen. What's the, what? to go home? Would you tell the, the sure, game? go home. Okay. Go home. Are we have a day game. Yeah. Pardon me. Are they actually going home? I have no idea, but I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what if this game goes on and on and on, and you have to wait till tomorrow morning to find out if you clinch? It's okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Is it, Joe, a bit disappointing when the atmosphere, the energy, the crowd is so eager for? Well, I mean, it, obviously it is, but this is uh, nothing's a lock in our in our game. You know, you go out and you play. Our guys played uh, very very hard. We we like I said, we made some mistakes. Um, it had been wonderful to do that for the fans right there. We were unable to do so, but um, that's part of the uncontrollable nature of our game. Joe, it worked out for you with Montgomery getting the base hit, but did you think about a pinch hit or even? Oh, no, not at all. No, 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 no. No, there's uh, part of it is he has to be stretched out. I think he had 85 pitches, six innings. That's a really good outing for him. Uh, no, there's not that kind of a urgency about what we're doing right now. It's just um, he needs to pitch. Um, he did. He pitched really well. Like I said, I, I just I would just take one pitch back from his whole performance. That's it. Otherwise, he was really, really good today. Was that a good piece of hitting Yeah, you know, inside the line. I mean, um, uh, that that's fortuitous. No, no, not at all. It's, I'm saying it's just a good piece. I saw the replay. He kept it fair. If you wake up tomorrow and you're NL Central champs, do you just turn the page right away, or do you take any time to you know, welcome it? S Starbucks. <laughs> uh, get the lineup in and, and get back out here. I mean, honestly, it's... Oh, Giants are up. See, there you go. Um, I, I Listen, I am as eager as everybody else is in this room. However, uh, pragmatically, let's do this. Let's get move it along, and let's get ready for the next step. This is just the first step. I mean, we have much larger um, baseball fish to fry in our in our skillet. So I'm, you know, let's just get this done. And uh, our guys, uh, I thought we're really ready to play tonight. Uh, you're going to enjoy tomorrow's lineup, whether we are in or not. Um, you're going to enjoy tomorrow's lineup and uh, just keep moving it forward. If the Giants hold on, though, will you, this team celebrates everything, will you have the party after tomorrow's game? They of course, celebrate. of course. I think we had to do that last year, didn't yeah. we? We did, yeah. It's, uh, it's um, it, to some it might be anticlimactic, but we're, how many wins do we have now? 90, 93. 93, that's not a bad season. So whatever, however we get this accomplished, I'll take it. I'll be happy with it, yeah. Uh, again, honestly, I can't be uh, upset about anything. Our guys have been fabulous. Uh, they're ready to play tonight. It didn't work. So uh, let's see what happens in this other game. And uh, either way, we'll, we'll come back and play tomorrow. Still batting. Still batting. <laughs> Groovy. Go. Go Giants. <laughs> Go Daddy. <laughs> Thanks, John. See you guys. All right, see you. All right, there's Joe Madden brought to you by Xfinity. For those of you looking for Hard Count with Brian Urlacher, that will air at 10.50. Following the Brian Urlacher Hard Count show with Mark Sinowski, you will then see Inside Look, Kyle Hendricks. All coming up still tonight here on Comcast Sportsnet. Now let's get back to what we were discussing. So the Brewers are able to take that 5-3 to three lead. The Cubs are able to battle back, had opportunities. Jason Hayward, good to see two doubles tonight. In the second one, he hit a rocket down the right field line. Yeah, starting to come out of it. Really good to see him swinging the bat. The, the double down the left field, left field line was impressive. Certainly the one to right turned on the lot. 95. 95 miles an hour. Great to see. Short, quick, compact swing. Got us back to within a run. And then he is on at third. Montero walks, but Wilson Contreras takes two pitches that he questioned. I watched him just now. Close. You're not going to get every call. They ring him up. Well, it's a perfect example of what I was talking about. The Brewers' bullpen, they worked back into that count. Threw a 2-1 breaking ball, he took it. Threw another one, he ultimately took it as well. Thought it was outside the strike zone, but again, that's where you give credit. I mean, they made pitches when they had to with their secondary stuff. All right, we've got to take a timeout. We'll come back, take you through the box score, the pitching recap, set the stage for tomorrow. You will get that game as well right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Captain Holly with you from Wrigley. We'll be right back. Cubs Post Game Live is presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. If you feel like singing a song, and you want other people to sing along, and just sing what you feel. Don't let anyone say it's wrong. When there's a light, what light? Well, there's a light 
From the first building block to the last coat of paint, Menards is here to help with an 11% rebate on everything, even sale prices, so you can finish your latest project and start planning the next big thing. Update your bathroom and get an 11% rebate on American Standard Toilets. Save big on vanity lights and chandeliers from Patriot Lighting. Save big money and get an 11% rebate on everything, even sale prices, now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Now that Big Poppy's retiring, he's being smarter with his money. I need to be smart with my money. So he's become a super savvy shopper. Oh. That's why the Xfinity Best Offer of the Year is a home run. Lock in yeah. your rate for two years, plus get the X1 voice remote. There is no crying in baseball. It's the Big Poppy of deals. I'm not crying. My eyes are just sweating. Score our Best Offer of the Year on the X1 Triple Play from Comcast for only $89.99 a month and lock in your rate for two years. Go online, call, or visit today. Why jump out of a perfectly good airplane? Why not? Chicagoland Skydiving Center was voted the best in the U.S. with a perfect safety record, a one-of-a-kind environment, and round-trip shuttle service from downtown Chicago. Come experience the greatest adventure in the area, Chicagoland Skydiving Center in Rochelle. Visit us at perfectlygoodairplane.com. Now playing on DirecTV Cinema. Who's that guy on camera two? Oh, somehow these stock market clowns stole $800 million. There's a reason he interrupted you on live TV. You have no idea how high this goes. Find out anything you can. They're shooting at me, not you. Oh, my God. There was only one way this show was going to end. Money Monster. Movies start at Channel 125. Top for our four seasons heating, air conditioning, and cooling. Who's hot and who's not? Who's hot? Brian Dozier. This guy is just burning up, killing it for the twins. Who's not? Mike Napoli, struggling mightily. Brutal. All right, time now for our pitching recap brought to you by Elk Grove. Pitching recap. Let's talk about Mike Montgomery. I thought he did his job tonight. Well, he did a solid performance. I mean, think back to the solo homer. No overreaction there. I mean, you're going to give up a solo homer every now and, and again. And then 200 runs. Right, and then 200 runs. I mean, again, you know, how that inning happened kind of I, I think is what sets us behind it. So many times this year we've seen, you know, an error made and then the pitching kind of bail us out of it. And unfortunately in this situation, a couple of doubles came right after that error by Addison Russell. So that's how that one broke down. I thought a solid performance, seven strikeouts over six innings. You couldn't ask for any, anything more, especially when you consider the game that Mike Montgomery was just given the, 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 the keys to. He just got over here only a couple months ago. You remember, he's out here trying to pitch the, pitch the clincher. I think there was a little extra adrenaline. I thought he did a fantastic job under the circumstances. Six innings, four hits, three runs, one earned, one walk, seven strikeouts, yeah, and he has been uh, very, very solid. Let's hear from know, Mike like Montgomery at the podium. Back, but, um, you know, I thought I made a lot of good pitches. Maybe he called a great game back there, and we had a good connection, and, you know, just... I just like to have that fourth inning back, and you know, I made a couple of mistake pitches right there, and uh, you know, kind of just learn from that going forward. What was it like to get that question? Uh, that was a lot of fun. I mean, I I went to Davey before, after my last at bat, and I said, hey, you know, I, you know, tell me something, give me something to work with here. You know, I need to, I need to get some better swings on the ball, and he, uh, you know, told me a couple of things, and you know, I just I went out there, I just tried to, you know make a good swing and and that was pretty cool getting that hit um you know especially in that situation uh you know that was a lot of fun uh i think we got the ball back yeah i, I saw him throw it in so i think uh, i think we're gonna get a hold of that mike what's it like to pitch in this park with something on the line yeah that was uh the atmosphere tonight was the best probably one of the best games i've ever been a part of you know i know uh, you know the situation we had tonight where we could have clinched um, but you know I, I've been a part of some big games before but you know I just the vibe and, and the way the fans were and you know the guys around the, the clubhouse today and during the game uh, that was a lot of fun and 
you know, it was unfortunate we couldn't win. And, you know, I, I think we played a good game and, you know, they, they played a good game as well. And, and, you know, I know they are definitely not giving up and they kind of raised their level of play as well. Um, but like I said, you know, I, I, the fourth inning, I, I wish I would have had back, but I thought I made a lot of good pitches and I was just trying to go out there and, you know, pitch like, uh, you know, we had to win the game. And, and I thought I did a lot of good, pit, you know, threw a lot of good pitches. I, I know Miggy and me had a, a good a good night tonight, and it was just that fourth inning, you know, it was unfortunate. But, you know, I, I think we're definitely motivated going forward, so we're, we're going to have some fun with it. And, you know, uh, whatever happens, uh, get ready for tomorrow. Well, the Giants are up right now. Joe says he's going home. What are you all going to do? Uh, yeah, I think we're going to go home and, you know, I, and just get ready for tomorrow and focus on winning tomorrow. And then, you know, if we clinch, then celebrate tomorrow. All right, time for our Honda winning box score. And this one belongs to the Brewers. VR was a one hit night tonight, but really didn't do any real damage. Uh, Broxton had the one hit, but that was a long ball, a home run. One hit for Ryan Braun, a two hit night for Santana. Arcia had a hit and also drove in a couple of runs and a hit for Scooter Jeanette. And that was the big two run double that fell next to Jorge Soler. All right, we got to take a timeout. We'll come back more on our Blue Cross Blue Shield Cup Post Game Live. Kevin Holly here at Wrigley. We'll be right back on CSN. Two hundred million watching history be made. Two million making their own. Five seconds gained and a nomination won. When it counts, the biggest moments count on Comcast Business. With $5,000 of NBC coverage for the games, over 900 miles of fiber laid for the Democratic National Convention, 40 pit stalls monitored at once for NASCAR, and 10 terabytes of data transferred for the big game at Levi's Stadium. We know what it takes to connect millions. Imagine what Comcast can do for your business. In case you need anything, just give me a call. <laughs> P.O. Box 17. Of course I'm a real company. You got the area code. Everything your customers see tells a story. Let the UPS store help you tell the right one. From business cards and banners to expertly packed shipments to mailboxes with a real street address. Come in today for help. proud enough to wear our name in big, red, scripted letters. That's why we lager, filter, and package cold. Because we believe every climb deserves a refreshing finish. Whatever your mountain, climb on. It's Peyton. It's Peyton on Sunday morning. Hey, man. What up, Peyton? You know I have Direct TV NFL Sunday ticket. I get every game, every Sunday, all in HD. Uh, yeah, I know that. So you want to come over? I'll make nachos. I can't right now, man. I'm playing. Well, well, oh, yeah. Well, all right. Pencil you in for Tuesday. Get NFL Sunday ticket included at no extra charge. Only on Direct TV. Cubs fans, show your team pride with Cubs checking in an official Cubs MasterCard debit card available only at your local Wintrust Community Bank. Go to Wintrust.com slash Cubs to learn more. Member FDIC. All right, our UPS store taking care of business player of the game, and that would be Scooter Jeanette. He comes up with game-winning hit. 
and just a tough play, and Solaire didn't make it. No man's land, yeah, slicing double down the left field line, big base hit right there, certainly uh, somehow stayed fair. I mean, again, I thought it was going foul, especially off the left-hander's bat, but it hits just inside the line. The biggest base hit for the Brewers tonight, and they go on to win this ballgame. All right, and that is our UPS store taking care of business. Play of the game. Our Blue Cross Blue Shield, key to the game. Holly Town 28, take it away. All right, well, tonight's the night. I guess we should maybe put a question mark <laughs> at right. the end of that. It was supposed to Tonight's be tonight. The night. Right, well, you know what? I thought, you know, there was a lot of momentum coming into this one. They played particularly well on the road trip in the St. Louis series. I thought they were going to come in here. I thought what, what was big was winning on your own terms, and I think that's it. You know, that would have been your motivation tonight is if you're a Cubs player. You want to come home. You want to win it in front of your fans and do it, you know, go out there and play a great baseball game. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. It doesn't change the Cubs' position. It's just how you kind of want to do it. Now, St. Louis and San Francisco are going at it right now. They happen to be out in San Francisco. We may wake up tomorrow morning, and they won the, this division. Again, that's the idea. You wanted to win it on your terms. It's going to happen. It's just a question of when. Yeah, then if that happens, they can party after the game on right. Friday. Cubs and the Brewers will rematch again tomorrow, game two of this four game set. Pitching matchup. Maybe there's no better guy to have on the mound. It's kind of apropos. I didn't come here for a haircut. <laughs> Let's get it out. Okay, for jewelry. John Lackey against Chase Anderson. Well, again, very good matchup. This Brewer team is uh, a lot better than I think a lot of people, maybe even some Cubs fans think they've been playing good baseball right now they've been in a, a thorn in a few teams side and uh, they got a little bit of offense and power in there and they can hit and, and Chase Anderson's having a pretty decent season so it's not going to be an easy ball game we're going to go out there and get it done first thing that I, I would say tomorrow is you want to see the Cubs play a little bit better all around game because that's what stood out in this ball game tonight it wasn't the pitching it was a little bit of the defense it was a little bit of the base runnings you know mix in a little timely hitting but just a cleaner ball game right that's exactly it whether you lose or you win you want a clean game. We yeah. saw a tough game for Addison Russell. The Solaire play. Bryant gets picked off second base. Right. Want those mistakes cleaned up. Well, and that's how you want to win. And again, like I talk about, you know, winning on your arm terms. I mean, baseball is an imperfect game. I'm not going to sit here and say that we're going to, you know, they're going to go out and win eight nothing tomorrow. That would be great. But if it doesn't happen and you get the win, it's part of playing the game of baseball. Just a little cleaner game. Even if tonight would have been turned into a win, I still think we would have talked about, you know, that little bit of sloppiness. All right, Cardinals trailing in the fifth tonight. They are losing 4-2 to two at San Francisco. If that score holds, the Cubs would be the NL Central champs. Hard count with Brian Erlacher is coming up. Then inside look, Kyle Hendricks, Todd Hollinsworth, I'm David Kaplan. You guys have a wonderful evening. We'll see you tomorrow. proud enough to wear our name in big, red, scripted letters. That's why we lager, filter, and package cold. Because we believe every climb deserves a refreshing finish. Whatever your mountain, climb on. Now that Big Poppy's retiring, he's being smarter with his money. I need to be smart with my money. So he's become a super savvy shopper. Oh. That's why the Xfinity Best Offer of the Year is a home run. Lock in yeah. your rate for two years, plus get the X1 voice remote. There is no crying in baseball. It's the big poppy of deals. I'm not crying. My eyes are just sweating. Score our best offer of the year on the X1 Triple Play from Comcast for only $89.99 a month and lock in your rate for two years. Go online, call, or visit today. Comparing midsize sedans? Here's what puts the Kia Optima ahead of the Nissan Altima. The Kia Optima has an available surround view monitor and turbo engine. The Nissan Altima does not. 
The 2016 Kia Optima is a KBB.com Best Buy Award winner. The Nissan Altima came up short there, too. Discover the next generation Optima. It's not your average midsize sedan. Lease the Optima LX for only $179 a month or get 0% financing. Visit your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Kia dealer for details. Cubs Post Game Live is brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Visit MyKiaChicago.com to learn more. Welcome in to the premiere edition of Hard Count with Brian Erlacher. We are lucky to have the future Hall of Famer with us throughout the season. He'll provide his expert analysis on all things Bears. You know, it's been a year of change at Hallis Hall. Ryan Pace came in as general manager. John Fox, the head coach, it's their second season. It had been one of the oldest rosters in the NFL. Now it's kind of in the middle of the pack. Have a lot of young guys is great with the enthusiasm and all that, but there's also some growing pains, and we saw a lot of that on Sunday. Yeah, but at the same time, there's a lot of veterans on that team as well. So they'll make those changes. Coach Fox is a veteran coach. He's got a veteran staff. They'll get those changes made quickly, and they'll, they'll progress every, every week, I believe. Well, there were a number of bright spots in the game on Sunday, especially the play of the new inside linebackers. The Bears added in free agency. Yeah. Danny Trevathan, Jarrell Freeman. Trevathan, Super Bowl champion with the Broncos last season. Freeman, a lot of great years with the Colts. What does it mean to add guys with that kind of veteran experience to this team? I was a big fan of both of those guys before they came to the Bears. You know, Freeman and Indy and Danny uh, there in uh, Denver with the Super Bowl, Super Bowl ring. But they know how to play football. They ta they're tackling machines. They, they know, understand pass defense so they, they don't have to worry about taking them out on third down. And they get to the football. You know, they seem like pretty good leaders out there. Uh, and then they'll, they'll get that defense better as the season goes on as well. As you mentioned, Trevathan has the Super Bowl experience. He's not afraid to have his voice heard in the huddle. Yeah. That's a good thing to have some guys that are going to make sure yeah. that everybody's where they're supposed to be. I believe it's a good thing, especially for a middle linebacker. You know, and he's he's a leader. He's been that way in Denver for a long time. Now he's doing it here. And I think if, if the guys listen to him, it's more important. It's, it's one thing to say it, but when the guys listen to you, it's just another thing. I wonder what the adjustment is for Trevathan. You know, he won the Super Bowl with the Broncos last year. You only can play in the league so long, so you want to make sure you get the big contract. But you're going from a Super Bowl champion to a team that's kind of in a rebuilding phase. Is that tough? I wouldn't call it a rebuilding phase. You know, that anytime you have a quarterback like the Bears do, I don't think you're ever rebuilding. Uh, there's good players around him. Good players on defense as well. You know, so I don't think he, he, if he felt that way, he probably wouldn't have came here. Plus, Coach Fox had a lot to do with that, I think, of as well. Those two guys combined for 28 tackles in the opener. That's like you and Lance Briggs right that's there. That's more than me and Lance Briggs right there. That's, no, those, no. Those, those are some big numbers right there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty impressive. On the outside, kind of a surprise, top traffic Leonard Floyd was brought in. There was some thought that he might be more of a third down specialist. Mm -hmm. He wound up playing 60 out of the 75 Good. snaps on defense. So obviously Vic Fangio knows he's got a tool he can use on the defensive side. 75 snaps is a lot for a defense. They need, to get right. that, they need to get that number down. But, you know, the kid's athletic. He gets to the quarterback. He's got a high motor. He's young, so he can play all those snaps. He'll be okay. But I, he's just going to get better and better, I believe, as well as the season goes on. Uh, once he gets some weight on him, he's going to be a little more powerful. But just turn him loose now, Leonard rush quarterback yeah good things ahead for that guy he could be a future impact player in the nfl well in case you didn't notice the title sponsor for hard count is restore and as we know brian has first-hand knowledge of just how effective that yeah. process can be bears fans remember the bald middle linebacker yeah. wearing number 54 this is the uh, before and after photo yeah. uh,
Getting in a third so far. He has ball one for Eaton, who's one for three. 13 of his last 28 for Adam Eaton. Field straight away. Not overly deep as Adam that time swung one out of the zone. See the Honda pitch tracks, both pitches essentially in the same spot. Coco Crisp has out number one. With MLB.TV Premium, watch every out-of-market game live in HD on more than 400 supported devices and enjoy a free subscription to AtBat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. For details, visit MLB.TV. Well, I hope this bodes better than it appears as the angel of death has arrived. Bill Melton, along with Chuck Garfine, will be doing the post game from the booth. They have won one game this year in their sojourns to do the live post game. Chuck was just in the studio. I mean, there must be like some sort of beaming equipment that Comcast has, right? They have the fastest limo service around. And you think I might be able to borrow something it? Something that you could use <laughs> is Injet to get you all the way in the heart of Oklahoma. Whatever got Chuck to the ballpark that fast needs to get me to Midway by 555. <laughs> <laughs> Two balls and a strike on Anderson. You'd love to see Tim get on with the speed that he has representing the go ahead and potential winning run. Good straight change and Tough to pick up the spin. I really almost have to wait for the shadows to move. What? Well, Just call time you a could, lot. You could see a fastball. But you're not going to be able to see the spin on either a curve, a slider, or straight change. And there you see the visibility. Just not great. Slim to none. And Slim's on his horse. If only it was like that for the first five months of the season. Strike three, two down in the eighth. Pitcher's ERAs would be tiny. <laughs> Third strikeout for Tim today, fifth for Sox batters. And here is Melky, who's one for three. to Melky from Cody Anderson who's thrown the ball well out of the Cleveland bullpen today. Got a couple of guys warming up. Percy Garner. Right center field for Melky up the alleyway and off the wall. The Sox are one hit away from changing the score. For Terry Francona, there's no way you're facing Jose Abreu in this situation with first base open. Well, Melky drives this ball in the gap. He's hit the ball hard three times. One time, a line out to second base. Representing the go ahead run, standing in scoring position, but. I would be fairly shocked if he were to see any pitches near the zone, and I don't think he's going to. There will not be a second homer in a Jose's future in this at bat. Intentional walk coming up. By the way, Jose Abreu, before the game, met a big fan of his named Shane Callahan, who's 11 years old and undergoing treatment for bone cancer in his left leg. 
Shane asked for an autograph ball from Jose but instead got to meet him today Shane asked him for a home run before the game and Abreu provided that home run in the fourth inning. It'll be up to Todd Frazier with this impending ball four. With the lone run of the ball game for the Sox, it's the first White Sox run. E-Click Lending has donated $100 to the Pat Tillman Foundation. So